Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1031. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, click on the link below the video. Hey, we have a great video here. We're going to do a four-way lookup. And uh, actually, this is Ed's workbook. And he has to look up Ed and Admin in two different columns. Oh, we can already see one of the defining aspects of this problem. There's duplicates, right? So we're going to do some sort of lookup when there's duplicates. Anytime you have duplicates for lookup, there's no built-in function. You have to switch over to some array formula. Why? Because this is going to be the first record in the matching data set. And then this one's going to be, uh, you know, whatever that is, 15 or uh, whatever. So anytime you have more than one row or column, for that matter, you're going to have to use some sort of array formula to generate those relative positions. And let's see, what relative position is this? That's 16. So 1, 16, and then whatever this one is down here. So we're going to have to create an array that contains those relative positions. And then as we copy down, tell our lookup formula to get the first one, and then the 16th one, etc. But there's still another complication. We have two areas. There's area one, there's area two. So this will tell us which one of the two blocks to use. And then within that area, it's location one, two, or three. Now, Ed has a great formula here. Now, index, and he took the whole uh, this whole two-way range and then did small to generate the uh, or to extract the relative position as we copy the formulas down. And we did he did an if in this array right here. And look, he joined the two columns here and then say, are you equal to the admin and the ed? So instead of doing two ifs, he concatenated. And then for the logical test, we did this little bit right here is our formula number incrementer. This bit right here is the formula element that increments the number 1, 2, 3 as we copy down. And finally, for the column number, because he, had, he has one index array, he, he did an if. He said, if this equals area 1, then just give me that 2. Otherwise, that 2 plus 3. Because 1, 2, 3, if it was a 2, if we added 3, 1, 2, 3, boom, that would be perfect. All right. And then he used if error. So I'm going to do uh, my take on this. And I'll do uh, some different stuff just to illustrate there's always more than one uh, way to do things. Now I'm going to use the index, and I'm going to actually use this bottom part. I, you know, 99% of the time I use array, row number, column number. But if you use a reference row number, column number, there's an area number. And we have, I'm going to treat this as two separate tables to look up, area 1 and area 2. Now how do you do that? For the reference, you have to put in parentheses the two areas you're looking up. Control Shift Down Arrow, F4, comma. And so I'm still inside that second parentheses. I'm going to get the next area. Control Shift Down Arrow, F4. And now for reference, I'm going to close parentheses. Now the row number. That's where we have to, as our formula copies down, get relative position 1, then 16. So first, Oh, we could use the small function, right? That would require Control Shift Enter because we're using if. But I'm going to use the 2010 function, aggregate. Now, the great thing about aggregate is one of the functions uh, 14 to 19 allow you to do array calculations. And there it is. Number 15 is small, so we'll get our small. We're going to use 6 for ignore errors because our next argument array uh, we'll have some errors in it. Now, why are we using aggregate instead of small? Because this array argument can handle array calculations without having to do Control Shift Enter. All right, so the calculation is well, I need all the relative positions and the formula element to create an array of relative positions. I'm going to say, give me the row of all those, F4. That will give me, of course, uh, 4, 5, 6. So from that, I'm going to subtract row of the first cell in that range, F4. That would give me 4 minus 4 is 0, so I add 1 back in. You know, if you guys watch 
uh, my videos. I think this is what the 500th time I've done this, but this is a useful um, little formula element. All right, so we're going to take that. That's all the row numbers, but we need to filter and just get the ones that match our criteria. So we divide by open parentheses, open parentheses. Now, I could do the concatenating, but I'm going to do two columns. F4, I don't know why my F4 is not jumping back up there. So I'm going to highlight that whole column and say, all right, are any of you equal to that cell with Ed, F4? Close parentheses, times open parentheses. We'll get our second column, F4. Are you equal to the admin? Now, notice it says Ed admin, Ed admin. So it seems like if they're always going to be Ed admin, we wouldn't have to use both columns. But just in case there's another Ed working in a different top, uh, department. That's why we have to do both of those, right? F4, close parentheses. Now, we want to do this multiplying before this division, so I have to add an extra set of parentheses around that. All right, so if I click that argument array in the screen tip and hit F9, there's our filter. Our divide by 0 will be our filter. There's our relative positions 1, 15, 29. We need to extract the first one, the second one, the third one as we copy down. That's where the small comes in, right? And we need to tell small first, second, third. So in the K, we do rows. And I'm sitting in K11. So I'm going to do K dollar sign 11 because I'm locking the row, colon K11. The first row is locked. The second one is not. That will expand and give us the numbers 1, 2, 3 as we copy down. All right. So that's the K. I close off the aggregate. And sure enough, that will give us, as we copy down 1, 16, those relative positions. All right, now I come to the end comma, the column number. Now, I've done two separate areas. So I'm simply going to click on this. And that will work, F4. And then the area number. I need a 1 or a 2. So whatever order you put the two references in in the first argument of index, you got to um, put a 1 for this one and a 2 for that one. So I'm going to check this out, go area 2 in double quotes. If er no, not if. This is a Boolean calculation. The text string area 2, if it happens to be equal what I type there, F4, so I'm going to put parentheses around it to force that equal sign to calculate before the plus 1. Now check this out. Why is it going to give me a 1 and a 2? When it's area 2, that will be a true. True is converted to a 1 with this math operation. 1 plus 1 is 2. When it's a false, it'll be converted to 0 with the math operation. And the 1 plus 0 is 1. So that will work for our area number. Now I don't have to use Control-Shift-Enter because I use aggregate. Control-Enter and copy it down. I'm going to get rid of the num error. A couple videos ago, and in my book, Control-Shift-Enter, um, I taught, have a section on when to use if error and when not to. Um, you know, Ed used this here, and it is perfectly OK in this situation. Why? Because this is a teeny data set. It's never going to slow down calculations. However, if you had big data sets, the if error has to run here. Um, I'm sorry, the big this big thing has to run even in a cell where it's not going to have to deliver something. So in this case, it's fine. But just to compare and contrast, I will go ahead and use the if function. I've done a count if to count how many eds and admins. So that's a helper cell. I'm going to say if. And then this formula element rows. I'm going to click on the K, Control C. If rows is greater than the count. F4, then what do we want? Double quote. Otherwise, please run that huge big uh, index formula. All right, you ready? Control Enter. I didn't have to use Control Shift Enter. And there we go. All right, uh, fun with four way lookup. There's one good formula, and here is another good formula. Oh, I can see um, no records. That. Um, Actually, Ed did something cool here. For the first one, it says no records found. And for the second one and the remaining ones down, it's double quote. That's because if you come down here and select marketing, there's no Ed in marketing. And that's a nice little um, added touch. So I could come up here and just for the first one say, you know, no record. 
but then the remaining ones I keep with that uh, uh, double quote right there. All right, we'll see you next trick.